Hello and welcome to Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker here with a few tips on how to use a Japanese kyusu making Japanese green tea. Uh, you've got some basic equipment to start off because I have to move a little bit quickly. I've got water that's, that's been boiled and have to uh, use that uh, in the right time frame here. So I want to show you what happens if you've got water that's you know straight from the boil uh, with a lot of your with a lot of tea uh, kettles. You can now adjust your heat so that you don't have to start at a boil. But let's assume what if you did. You want to have your equipment laid out in front of you. You want to have your your tea close by. I'll be talking about that in just a moment. Your kusu. This is a clay pot. This particular pot is uh, about just under one uh, cup. You know, between seven to eight ounces, about 200 milliliters. So what I'm going to do, because temperature of the water is important, I'm going to start by pouring my water into my cup so I know about how much water I want to have. With using a teapot like this and using a Japanese green tea, it's also important to consider using, you want to be able to use or pour, at least pour off, all of the tea that you're steeping. Because you do not want to have uh, water remaining in the in the pot that is uh, still steep, that continues to steep the tea. Uh, you want to be able to pull off as much of that as possible as at the right time. So now this is still hot to touch. I can let this cool, but instead I'm going to just transfer to another vessel. And there's a couple of reasons. For the first steeping, that this step may not be as necessary. But if you're serving more than one person and you don't want to go through this kind of cup rinsing process each time, it's a good idea to have a pitcher so that you can kind of get a rough idea as to when next time if I boil, I can pour directly into my pitcher first, get an idea of where that water level stands so that next time I just pour water into here at that same, about the same level, and then into my pot. Now the other thing, the, this kind of process, of course, was designed or intended to work with Japanese green teas. I have a shaded uh, fukamushi, or, or deep steamed, it's not, a, it's not classified as a gyokuro, uh, and also a note that there are specific, uh, you can get into more elaborate or more detailed processes. There are actual there's an, I believe there's a national Japanese sencha uh, school for learning or for the actual formal process involved with preparing a sencha green tea in a style like this. Um, but what I'm going to go ahead and do now, I'm going to go ahead and put my sencha into my pot. Um, a note here, some places will advise you to heat your pot first. Uh, I try, again, because I'm trying to moderate uh, and cool my water, I want a at least a room temperature pot, not a cool pot, but I don't want a hot, I certainly don't want a warm pot. I want this pot to absorb and pull away some of that heat, so that it, it, so I don't want a pre-warmed pot in that sense. The goal, what I'm trying to get to is, oh, about one, somewhere between 150 uh, and maybe at most 170. Some people, some some kinds of Japanese green teas even go as far as 180. But I like to get to in a lower, cooler range. So the other things that you can do, if you feel that it's uh, still too, still kind of hot to the touch, that's kind of a general rule. If it's still too kind of hot to the touch, you could start again with a cooler or, or more, not a pre-warmed teapot, and you can also start by pouring at a higher temperature so the water cools more as it falls. There we go. That gives us, that's actually fairly close to the top. This particular pot is one that I prefer also because it's a nice clay. It's very simple. Uh, has, it has its own simple elegance to it. It's a nice glaze to it and not overly uh, not it doesn't it's not it's not going to be very porous it's like a a Chinese Ishin clay tea but uh, this one in particular I got from Rishi tea and it has a clay filter you want a kind of filtration mesh or screen type uh, in the base of the or the inside of the pot here at the 
the spout area. Some teapots will have a metal screen, mesh screen type, uh, which can be harder, trickier to clean, depending on if you can remove it. It can get uh, stains or it can get discolored with, uh, with use. This one that has a nice included built in. It's actually, you know, part of the clay, a clay screen there, which is nice. And it's quite fine. It's uh, like the very tip of a toothpick has, has poked these holes. They're very consistent and even in their, in their application as well. Now, this hasn't steeped that long, but that's okay because we did have, we did still, we were still hot to the touch as far as temperature goes. But see here again, it's nice to give a good shake. A lot of uh, the, the tea element has been strained, or that screen did keep a lot of it out. It did keep, let some very, very fine particles. And what I'm also doing here, and this is not part of the more elegant uh, traditional process, but I'm shaking out those last few drops so that there is no more water that's steeping those residual leaves. The other thing, because I prefer to keep these leaves as cool as possible, I'm going to take the lid off so that they don't get trapped in warm, steamy air. Okay. Again, I'm able to see and, and remind myself of the water level, so that gives me a clue for if I do a second steeping, I can use that as a point of reference. And uh, by decanting also, like this, it allows me to have an even distribution in the strength or intensity of the tea. Uh, usually, as you pour, if you were to pour straight from the pot into your cups, you'd want to do pour little by little, going back and forth and adjusting, because the bottom or the last portion will be the more intense, more uh, darker colored, richer uh, liquid there. And you want to share that between the two. In this case, I'm able to distribute that more evenly by using the, uh, the pitcher here. So that gives you a little clue on how to do that first steeping and being prepared for second, second or subsequent steepings as well. So I hope this is something that you can find that you are, is, it's not overwhelming, it's not too challenging. A few basic tips on helping control your water temperature and steeping properly so that you can enjoy your Japanese green tea. Come back to Walker Tea Review for more tips on Japanese green teas and other teas.